Welcome in the Rover Sports, guys. How's it going here? Um, welcome back into the show. Just watched a beatdown by the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, pretty much going in, kicking the Chargers' ass, and taking control of the AFC West. And another AFC West title for Kansas City. You know, I know Denver won the West two years ago when they went on to win the championship with Peyton Manning. But, you know, other than that, Kansas City won last year, I believe a 12-4 and season. You know, this year, everybody talked about Kansas City, right, and how the wheels were coming off with the Kansas City Chiefs when they lost to the Jets, when they lost to the New York Giants, how they didn't start out the way that they wanted to. When they lost to the Buffalo Bills, that was really a head-scratcher as well. And I was waiting for Kansas City to return to prominence, and return to prominence they did. Andy Reid is usually a guy that in the middle of the season in November and December is when that train gets a rolling. And this year, he started out great. He started out out the shoot, you know, going, what was it, 5-0. and Everybody fought Kansas City's the best team in the NFL. They beat the Patriots. They beat the NFC East. They would beat the Eagles. They would beat the Redskins. Uh, they, they would thrash teams early on. Uh, they beat the AFC West teams. They even went to, Sandy, uh, to, to LA and got a win. So everybody thought Kansas City was all that. Then they had their huge slip up when they took so much time to get back to prominence. And just a huge night in them, you know, a huge night in general. In front of the home crowd, Saturday night primetime, the country watching, Marcus Peters. He takes a lot of shit. Um, he's kind of a controversial figure, talks a lot of trash, you know, got kicked out of, you know, got kicked out of Washington for college, you know, had some red flags going into the NFL draft. Oh, this guy quit on his team, whatever guy was fucking incredible. He is a pro bowl talent and he showed it today. I mean, three turnovers, two picks, the, the pick. The interception was hilarious. He was holding the football out like a loaf of bread. I mean, I've never seen a guy like he was holding the football out like he was playing like gym football, like gym flag football or whatever, like in ninth grade, tenth grade, whatever. He was holding it out like this the entire time, and and nobody went to take the ball from him. Uh, hell of a return. I don't know what the Chargers were doing there on defense. Um, then the then the the strip, which was a huge play in the game that set up Butker's field goal, I believe, to to make it a ten point game. The Chiefs could have even won by more. Uh, you know, Kareem Hunt very controversial. Is it a catch? Is it not a catch? I'm so tired of that crap. I thought he controlled the ball. The the ball happened to grace the turf, whatever. Point is, what I'm going to say is Kareem Hunt looked like the Kareem Hunt we saw this year. The only thing you need to do in the NFL in a one-game scenario is you need to get hot at the right time. You don't want to peak too early in the NFL or you're going to get bounced. Kansas City usually peaks too early and now they're peaking at the right time. Steelers are peaking. The Patriots had a little dip, but they can still peak and get a big time win. The Rams, I think, peaked too early. I don't like how they're going. The Vikings, you know, if the Vikings play the Rams in the playoffs, they might be able to get a win. So, if the Saints and the Seahawks win their divisions, it's going to be hard for the Eagles and the Vikings to win in that division. But, Kansas City. This is the year for Alex Smith. If it's not this year, it's never going to freaking happen. Alex Smith, he's going to get the Baltimore Ravens likely playing Kansas City at home because I believe Jacksonville is going to get the third seed. They have a really easy schedule the rest of the way home. Jacksonville will get to about 11 or 12 wins. So the Jags will get the third seed. That means that they're going to probably host the Chargers. I don't think the Bills are going to make the playoffs. I still have faith in the LA Chargers. I believe the Jags can beat the Chargers, whatever. Then that's going to set up a tricky game with Joe Flacco going to play Alex Smith. Two very similar franchises, except Joe Flacco's won the ultimate prize because of Raheem Moore, because he then went to New England, and he's gotten over that hump. He's beaten New England and Foxborough. So that's going to be a fantastic game, and I have the Chiefs winning that game. And then that's going to set up Chiefs-New England in the divisional round. 
just like Mark Sanchez and Rex Ryan. Alex Smith played well in New England last year. It's going to come down to can Sorensen, can Marcus Peters, can these guys cover New England's receivers? Can, you know, Chris Jones, can Ford, can, uh, I think Houston, I don't know if he's healthy or not, um, but can the defensive line of Kansas City play up to par? And can Kansas City make some plays? They have a good linebacking core. I know that, Kansas City. I know that they've been injury-riddled even in their linebacking core. But this is the year that Kansas City needs to make an AFC championship game. And the road's going to be hard. You have to go to New England, and then you have to go to Pittsburgh. And Big Ben, I think he's undefeated in Pittsburgh, other than Tom Brady, I think, might have beaten him one time in his career in Pittsburgh in an AFC championship. Other than that, he kills on the Ravens. He beat the New York Jets, where he played a flawless game, including a very clutch third down conversion that broke Jets fans' hearts. So, essentially... Kansas City, I believe that they can beat New England in the playoffs because I saw Mark Sanchez do it. Kareem Hunt is a baller, and I just believe that defense will rise to the occasion in Kansas City. They'll find a way without Julian Edelman. They'll get pressure on the quarterback, and then that'll set up Chief Steelers, where then I think the Steelers might just edge them out, unfortunately. I'd love to see Kansas City, though. I feel like Alex Smith and Andy Reid are due for a title. I feel that they are due. Alex Smith's been around this league a long time. He's in his prime right now. He has, you know, Tyreek Hill. He has a great tight end in Kelsey. He has Wilson. He has weapons. It's time for the Chiefs to win a couple of playoff games and get to an AFC championship. And if they go on the road to Pittsburgh or New England to get that win, it's just going to be huge. Because then Alex Smith will get another year with Andy Reid. They can try to then host playoffs next year. And I do believe that the Kansas City Chiefs will at the very least get to the AFC championship game. And I think that they even have a chance to win the AFC. Uh, you know, tonight's game, everybody was talking up the L.A. Chargers. Chargers this, Chargers that. The Chargers are on a roll. Everyone's sleeping on the Chargers. Phillip Rivers showed up tonight. If Donovan McNabb is not in the Hall of Fame, Phillip Rivers ain't a Hall of Famer. I'm tired of his shot put pass. I'm tired of, you know, these 5-10 to 10 yard throws and dumping it off to the running back. Bottom line, whatever. He hasn't had elite coaching. Schottenheimer, North Turner, whatever. He hasn't had an incredible defense. No one wants to go play in San Diego or, or L.A. There's a reason why Archie said to Eli, you don't want to be another New Orleans Aints. That's what he pretty much told the league. I was on the New Orleans Aints. I was on that Saints. And I only played one playoff game. And I damn near, he might even be a Hall of Fame player, Archie Manning. He fought his tail off there. But he's like, you know what? I want my son to get a great experience, okay? And so the whole thing happened with Eli Manning. And you know what? That's the most important decision of an NFL career is where you get drafted. And, you know, of course, he brought in Eli. So what I was going to say is, Phillip Rivers... He played on a torn ACL in the, against the, the Patriots. He's a warrior. He's a very likable guy. Incredible ambassador for the game of football. Very accurate, solid, solid player year in and year out. But he, he lacks that downfield passing game. And he's never had that go-to incredible receiver. He's had good running backs that can catch, you know, LT and Antonio Gates. He's had tight ends and running. He's never had that elite downfield passing game. They've never been able to put it all together. And tonight, you know, Phillip Rivers, he just came up really small tonight. And I have more faith in an Andy Reid and Alex Smith-led team than I ever do in Phillip Rivers. And you look at Rivers, I mean, Eli Manning, he's gone for the gauntlet and won titles. Big Ben's won titles. They have four titles between the two of them. And Phil doesn't even have any. He hasn't even played in any Super Bowls. So when you're looking at Phil Rivers for the Hall of Fame, 
that's what you kind of have to look at is Romo's not getting in, McNabb is not getting in, Phillip Rivers isn't getting in, and Eli's beaten Tom twice. So even though Rivers, you know, in the totality of his career in every regular season game, Rivers is a better quarterback in most of the regular season games, it comes down to games like this in December and November. And that's where Eli and Ben, with their team have been able to kind of rise above Phillip Rivers in these stretches. But I look at Kareem Hunt, the way that he's running the football, Kansas City, I think that they are going to go into New England and I think they're going to win that football game. Divisional round playoffs. Uh, Thinking about that game, I think it's going to be maybe a Sunday afternoon game because I believe the Jaguars and Steelers might be on Sunday night. Except, you know what? The, the, the Patriots always love to kind of play on Saturday. So I think actually the Chiefs-Patriots game might be on Saturday. Um, and, and I think that's that might end up happening. Except I don't think the Patriots have ever lost a playoff game on a Saturday. So that's what's going to happen, guys. It's going to be Chiefs. It's going to be Patriots. The Chiefs are going to win their first round matchup against Baltimore. And they're going to get a really rough draw. That's going to be a really scary game with with, uh, Joe Flacco. They're going to have to go against Flacco, Tom Brady, and Big Ben. I don't see them winning. Beating Big Ben in Pittsburgh is going to be a chore and a half. And I don't think that secondary is that good to do that. But I just feel that they can get after Tom Brady and they can actually beat the Patriots. And then the whole Mahomes era thing will have to wait another season in Kansas City. So that's honestly what I think. If the Ravens beat the Chiefs in the first round, then the Mahomes Alex Smith question is very, very relevant. The talk will be nonstop. If the Chiefs win one playoff game and can't beat the Patriots, Mahomes Smith will be a toss up. If Alex Smith beats the Patriots or Steelers in the divisional round, I don't think there's any way you should put Mahomes in. Even if Alex Smith throws five picks in the AFC Championship and goes a full Carson Palmer DeLome game. So that's just my thoughts on the matter, guys. I think Kansas City, I'm here for Kansas City and um, and Andy Reid. And I'd like nothing more than for them to finally get to that point. They've always done it the other way. They've always done the hard work. They've always been the most deserving, but they've never played the game of the NFL, which is just get hot at the right time. They've never done a New York Giants, Baltimore Ravens type run. It is time for them to sneak in in the four seed, and it's time for them to rock and roll and hopefully get to a Super Bowl with Alex Smith and maybe a championship. Thanks, guys. Have a great evening.